Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today I'm working on my 94 Ford uh, F350 uh, OBS 7.3 IDI diesel. And what I'm going to be working on today is something I've been wanting to get to for a while. I've started putting the parts together. I'm not quite ready yet for the front suspension, but I've got my rear Super Duty leaf springs, and that's what I'm going to be putting on today. I'm going to take the OBS leafs and overloads off of the truck and put on these Super Duty, um, these are actually F250 springs that I picked up, uh, but I think, it, I think it's going to be okay with the F350 OBS overloads on top of them. I want to go to the Super Duty springs because my truck was a service truck and has really stiff leaf springs in the back and it rides really rough, So uh, especially if it's unloaded. If I have some kind of a load in the back, uh, it rides pretty decent and if my tanks are full, but if if the fuel level gets low and I don't have anything in the bed it rides really hard so I'm hoping that the Super Duty springs will ride quite a bit better um, they're supposed to give you about an inch of lift over the stock Ford OBS springs so I'm hoping that as well because the back of my truck sits a little bit lower than the front and it'd be nice to level it out since right now I'm not towing with my truck or hauling anything heavy I don't think I need the overloads just yet so I'm not super concerned about that but if I can deal with them today and get it all done in one shot, that's the best way to go. That's, that's what I'd rather have happen. But we'll see how it goes, how time goes. I went to my local yard this weekend and picked up uh, what I was lacking for the leaf spring install, and that was the Super Duty uh, spring hanger bolts. These are 18 millimeter bolts, and they are very expensive if you order them new from uh, like Rock Auto or something. Uh, when I priced them out, they were $20 a piece. And uh, that was just more than I was willing to pay for a couple bolts. So I went to the yard and got these for a couple bucks uh, as opposed to $20 a piece. And while I was at the yard, I found some other goodies that uh, I'm going to be uh, putting in the truck later. Uh, some creature comfort stuff and uh, just a few goodies that my truck was needing. So in the end, I think I spent 50 bucks at the yard and I got, uh, I got everything I needed and then some. I've got some 5 8 hardware here for the shackle. Uh, the shackle end of the leaf spring. Uh, these these came in my RSK that I did on, on the front of my truck. So I've I've got all my bolts I need, and uh, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to tackle this today. As you can see, my Super Duty springs are super dirty, and I'm going to start off by just cleaning these up and lubing up all of the slider pads between the leaf springs so that they don't squeak and squeal and grind on rocks and stuff that's trapped in there from years of apparent off-roading use. Get started with cleaning these up, get the truck uh, up here on stands, and uh, I'm going to do one side at a time, I think. Leaf springs out, we'll put them side by side with the Super Duties. I'll get some dimensions for you guys so you can see how they compare side to side. I've already done some of that preliminarily, and uh, the length is the same. I think the Super Duties are pretty close to the same length. Uh, the arch is a little bit different though. The Super Duty springs are flat along the center line and they're arched at the ends, which is a little bit different than the uh, OBS style leaf spring pack. So we'll get them out side by side and compare them um, and do some measurements. I've got to drill out the front leaf spring hangers for these 18 millimeter bolts, so I'm going to be drilling them to 3 quarter inch, which is 1 millimeter over uh, essentially. And um, I've also got to drill out the rear shackles to 5 8 for my 5 8 hardware. You can use the OBS style shackle off of your truck uh, as long as you flip it around. You've got to flip it around for leaf spring clearance so that when the leaf spring articulates and the rear shackle moves uh, it doesn't interfere and hit the spring. So that's how I'm going to tackle this. We did the same thing on Kevin's truck when we did the F550 Super Duty Springs on the back of his truck. So I'm expecting everything will work just as well on mine. And then I'll take it for a test drive and give you guys my impressions of how, how it rides differently with the Super Duty Springs than it did with the stock springs. And hopefully it rides better um, and gives me that extra one inch of lift in the back that I need to level it out. That'd be great. So I'm going to quit talking and get to work.
All right guys, so I've got the passenger side leaf spring removed and I'm ready to modify the hanger for the bigger bolt in the front and modify the shackle here for the bigger bolt in the rear of the leaf spring. And then I can bolt everything back together on the passenger side. So I thought I'd show you guys the difference between the uh, in the hardware uh, between the Super Duty leafs and the regular Ford OBS leaf springs, the F350 in my case. So these are the, both the front spring hanger bolts. Super Duty one's the bigger one. This is 18 millimeter. The uh, standard Ford F350 bolt here on the OBS is much smaller. I believe these are 5 8 diameter. So lengthwise, the OBS is a little shorter than the Super Duty spring, otherwise or Super Duty bolt. Otherwise, they're comparable. Much stronger bolt on the Super Duty. The rear shackle hanger bolts are much the same. The new Super Duty size will be 5 8 These This is not the Super Duty bolt, but it's a bolt that I have that is the right length that I'm going to use. And this is the stock uh, F350 OBS bolt. This looks like half inch shank. And this is uh, 5 8 is what I'm going to be using for the Super Duty springs. The rear shackle uh, has seen better days. Bushings are pretty well shot. Unfortunately, I don't have new bushings right now to replace those, so I'm just going to run with what I got. The rear springs aren't making noise. It's not busted all the way through, but you can see it's pretty haggard. So what I'm going to do is chuck this up in the drill press and punch a 5 8 hole through both sides. I'm going to remount it then into the frame, into the shackle hanger on the frame with the open side facing the leaf spring so that when the spring articulates out it can clear the inside of the shackle. I was also pleasantly surprised when I took the overloads off that they will clear uh, on the Super Duty spring so I can just drop this on top of the Super Duty spring uh, put the put the leaf spring on top of it and clamp everything into place with the U-bolts. Don't need a new center pin for that so that's great. It's nice that we don't need center pins, it'll just bolt right in. The uh, I'm going to show you a comparison here between the two springs. The thickness of the spring pack is about the same. I think the Super Duty might be a hair thicker. My U-bolts had about a half inch of thread sticking out the top of them, so I have a little bit of fudge room there that I think will work out just fine. Okay, so here's the two leaf packs side by side lined up on the center pin. You can see the OBS leaf springs on top are a little bit shorter than the Super Duty. About an inch shorter. Otherwise very comparable. The Super Duty pack measures two and three quarter thick. Uh, the OBS leaf spring pack is two and three eighths thick. They're both five leaf spring packs. Four main leaves with one uh, bottom flat leaf. The wrap on the ends of the leaf springs is different. The OBS wraps underneath the leaf spring and the top spring or the main spring pretty much runs right through the center line of your bushing. Whereas the Super Duty springs wrap around the bushing and are, are much lower. They, uh, they wrap around the bottom of the bushing and the spring center line is below the, uh, the bushing center which I think accounts for the amount of lift that the Super Duty springs give you. And at the shackle end, it's the same thing. The, uh, the main leaf on the OBS pack runs right through the bushing center line, whereas the Super Duty main leaf runs below the bushing.
right guys well the new leaves are in I've got her fired up ready to go so let's take her on a ride and see how the super duty rear leaves compare to the old OBS leaves and uh, hopefully hopefully it rides pretty decent Trans seems to be struggling a little bit shifting today I guess it's a little quieter in here. That probably means there's a little less bouncing and jouncing going on. I mean, I don't expect this thing to ride like a Cadillac, you know. A truck's a truck, and especially an old truck like this one, isn't going to ride like a new truck. Well guys, I'm back from the test drive after doing the Super Duty Leaf Spring install. And I gotta say, I don't think it made much difference in the ride quality on my truck. I don't think it made it ride any better or any worse. Um, I think I do notice a little more driveline vibration from the increased uh, pinion angle uh, due to the extra height from the Super Duty Springs. That's one thing I do like about the Super Duty Spring Swap is that uh, it brought the back of my truck up quite a bit. It probably lifted it a good, at least a good inch, uh, maybe, maybe a little more than an inch. Uh, the bias now is a half inch higher in the back, so I've got about a quarter tank of fuel in both of my tanks, and um, right now the way it's setting, uh, the back is a half inch higher than the front. So I'm okay with that. I think that's fine. Once I fill those tanks up it'll probably settle down just about even which I think is where you want it to be um, so I'm okay with that and once I do the front Super Duty radius arm coil spring swap for the whole front suspension and get all of that done I'm hoping that'll bring the front up a little more and um, you know maybe level it out again to where it'll be it'll be sitting sitting just right um, and I'll be able to adjust the front height with coil spring spacers and get that get it dialed in just like I want it but for now, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the results. You know, my old leaf springs look fine, but they were probably sagged out pretty bit. I can see pretty heavy marks on the overloads from sitting hard on those stops on the frame. Um, and you can see that in that bottom flat leaf on both leaf springs that they, they were sitting and rubbing there against the, uh, against the first leaf in the, or the last leaf in the pack. So. I know it was used to carry a lot of weight as a service truck. The bushings are shot and worn out. So if nothing else, you know, doing the Super Duty spring swap has quieted down the truck and I don't have those loose squeaky bushings in the leaf springs anymore. So that's a plus. And with those spring pad sliders on uh, all of the leaf springs in the Super Duty pack, it should be a lot quieter riding down the road. Whereas the Super Duty springs don't, uh, mine don't have any sliders in between the leaf springs. so. They're just kind of rubbing against each other and making noise. Fortunately, my U-bolts were just long enough. I've got uh, one exposed thread at the top with the nuts tightened all the way up with the, uh, with the overload springs on top of the Super Duty springs. So that worked out in my favor today. Um, and what didn't work out in my favor today was the, uh, was the bolts that I had that I thought I was going to be able to use for the uh, rear shackle pivot um, on the Super Duty springs. Super Duty springs require a 5 8 diameter bolt in the back and you have to drill out your shackles uh, to allow that larger size bolt to go through. Um, and I had a couple bolts on hand but they were they were a little too short. If you're going to do this swap you, you have a couple options. The first option obviously is you could buy new bolts uh, buy 5 8 diameter by five and a half inches long fine thread with uh, nylon locking nuts and uh, flat washers and you should be good um, or alternatively you can use the front leaf spring hanger bolt from your OBS leaf spring pack and just buy a metric nut to fit it I don't know for sure the diameter of this I believe these are 16 millimeter but you'll want to check that out uh, before you get nuts for them but if you just get two nuts that fit these front leaf spring hanger bolts you can use these in the back as your shackle pivot bolts and uh, you don't have to search all over the world or buy expensive uh, hardware like I did. 
you'll want to get yourself some anti-seize, especially you guys that live where it snows. You know, I, I live out here in Southern California. We don't have to deal with too much rust, but we do have to deal with stuck bolts from time to time uh, from corrosion. And if you anti-seize all of your hardware um, and all of your pivot points and, and use the anti-seize as lubricant for the leaf springs where they sit against the overload block, um, it'll make it easier disassembling everything in the future and it'll give your bolts uh, some lubrication so that they can pivot. If you have really rusty hardware make sure you use that WD-40 or some other type of penetrating uh, fluid at least a week before you plan to remove that hardware just keep soaking them every day. Get under there spray everything down uh, for at least a week before you go to disassemble everything. Give that penetrating oil some time to soak into those uh, stuck fasteners and it should make the job a little bit easier for you. If you plan to use your overload leaf like I did on uh, on my Super Duty Springs, I swapped out the overloads from the F350 leaf pack onto the top of the, of the Super Duty leaves. Uh, you'll have to cut down the center bolt. Um, cut it all the way flush with the top of the nut or maybe leave one or two threads so that that plate can sit down flat all the way against the top leaf spring. And I've also got to go back and trim the uh, long shackle pivot bolts that uh, my son went and picked up for me today. He was kind enough to go do that while I was turning wrenches. Uh, they didn't have five and a half inch which is why these are so long and why I have to trim them. All they had was sixes so I've got to knock off about a half inch off the ends of those threads. Uh, another thing I want to mention is when you are grinding and cutting uh, underneath there make sure you're using your safety glasses even even if you're drilling out uh, drilling out those those holes for the front leaf spring hanger and the shackle pivot bolt holes um, wear safety glasses get used to doing it um, having metal ground out of your eyeball is not a good experience and you won't be able to work on your truck for at least a few weeks while your eyeball heals so yeah guys the leaf spring swap was pretty straightforward pretty easy to do I always start with taking the U-bolt uh, nuts off first uh, then take your rear shackle loose and your rear shackle bolt out um, then your front spring hanger and try to pivot the spring down off the block and down out of the shackle hanger and then you can pull the front pivot bolt out pick up the spring and, and pull it out from uh, out from on top of the axle so my conclusion yeah you know I, I, I like the extra lift height I don't think they ride any better than the OBS springs. Maybe they will on the highway or something, uh, but uh, and it could be the shocks that I'm running. You know, I'm using uh, some reflex shocks. They're new, but they're not. Um, they may not be stiff enough to dampen uh, the rebound of the Super Duty leaf springs. But all in all, I'm pretty satisfied with how things came out. So for today guys, for the leaf spring swap video, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for watching. If you're new, please click subscribe. We've got lots of Ford OBS projects coming up. I've got the back end on my truck done. Now I've got to get continue getting parts and get the front end together uh, so I can do the radius arm swap on the front of my F-350. I'm going to keep my Dana 60. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to run unit bearings. I don't want to run a, a, a non-manual locking hub. Uh, I don't want to have to try and convert a metric Super Duty front axle to 8 on 6.5. So I'm going to go ahead and make brackets and coil mounts and a track bar mount and weld those onto my Dana 60. And um, I'll have to use the Super Duty front sway bar and I'll have to use the Super Duty front steering components uh, to clear everything that's going to need to be mounted onto the axle. But I made a lot of axle brackets before and done a lot of welding on axles before so it doesn't scare me off and uh, I think in the end I'll be much happier with the nice free spinning Dana 60 that has full travel I'll, I'll adjust the uh, axle stop so I can get a little bit more turning radius out of it it won't probably give me as much radius as a as a super 60 but uh, it should be better than what I've got now with the leaf springs so I'm gonna keep putting those parts together guys thank you for watching and uh, please click like if you like the video and subscribe if you're new.